Here it is, the all new Land Rover Defender. In my opinion, it's the most anticipated new car of 2020. It's got some big boots to fill as well. The Defender name is truly iconic in my opinion. And this is an all new model. No more live axles, it's all independent suspension, air suspension, new aluminium monocoque chassis. It's gonna be really interesting to see how this car performs. And where better to first drive Land Rover's reimagined icon than in the wild northwest region of Namibia? To our west is the South Atlantic Ocean, and to our north is the Kanini River and the Angolan border. This is very remote and it's wild, and we have some great challenges and destinations on the menu. And I say reimagined because although this Defender does carry the new name, it is literally 100% new. Land Rover reckons this is going to be the best yet, but there's only one way to find out. Let's go and see what this Defender's made of. We've just landed on a small dirt airstrip in the middle of Apuo. That's a 7,500 strong town that's also the capital of this far-flung region. Namibia has one of the lowest population densities in the world, and this Kanini region is extremely sparse in terms of population. Himba and Herero people still live here, living mostly traditional lives in this harsh country where water is even more rare than bitumen. Starting in Apuo, our journey is an anti-clockwise loop that'll take in some of the best and most challenging terrain that Namibia has to offer. That's over three days. Our first destination of Van Zyl's Pass is an infamously sketchy mountain track which will give us access to a vast and ancient riverbed called the Marian Fluss. From there, we're following the Huarusib River all the way down to the wild and hostile skeleton coast where the desert meets the ocean. Then we will finish our loop by driving back inland and northward up to Wapuo again. With gear loaded into the Defenders, our first direction is northwest, away from that tiny sense of civilization that Apuo gives you. You're immediately on a wide and loose, unsealed road, pushing into country that gets slowly more rugged and wild. We're headed to Van Zyl's Pass, a remote and challenging track that locals mostly tackle on foot because of the rough terrain. It's tricky and challenging in spots, with cross axles and side angles to master. But I have to say the Defender did prove more than up to the challenge. If you're going to be doing this yourself, make sure your vehicle and you as a driver is capable enough to handle the challenge. The track's remote nature only compounds things if you do run into problems, and it's another good reason why travelling in convoy is such a good idea. The track has a history dating back to 1965, when the regional commissioner cut the mountain pass with local labour, hand tools and a lot of hard yakka. And he did it to give access to this incredible countryside further to the west. It's called the Marian Fluss, and once we drop down the steep and slippery goat track that is Van Zyl's, we could put on a little bit more speed and look out in awe of the incredible surroundings. The Marian Fluss is normally much more vibrant and green. It's an ancient riverbed that acts like pasture for large numbers of wildlife. But like Australia, Namibia has been going through many years of hard drought, and this country is incredibly parched. While it is now dry and dusty, it is still an incredible experience. I know I just mentioned drought, but funnily enough, our visit to the area also happened to bring some heavy rain to parts of the Kanini region. We didn't get rained on directly, but our convoy was brought to a stop by a raging river that only 24 hours ago was dry enough to drive. It's hard to believe, but our itinerary literally included driving up the river like many of the locals do because it's a relatively smooth track compared to rough and rocky alternatives. So much so, an earlier wave of Defender drivers came across a prime mover stuck in the riverbed and needing recovery. Luckily for the driver, two vehicles were able to hook up onto the front of the vehicle and pull it to safety. Safe to say, those 6.5 tonne recovery points probably got a workout on that day. For us though, the river was completely different. It was flowing hard and slowly rising. Out came the recovery gear as the lead car was anchored off another with synthetic rope in case it got washed away and after walking it to be sure, in went the Defender. It got across without any issues. The firm base of the river gives plenty of grip. Let's be honest, it's probably been baking in the sun for years. The Defender came back across again, only to find out later that the river ahead was impassable and we had to find another way around. Driving this Defender at the moment, you can tell from the driver's seat that it is a Land Rover Defender. There's a lot of homage in this interior here. I can see lots of it in the dashboard. 
It's a magnesium panel here, which is pretty cool. Even just the grab handles on the end, looking out over the bonnet. It's not a flat windscreen anymore, but it's definitely still Defender. Something that is definitely not Defender though, is the way this thing drives. It's gonna drive completely differently, obviously. It's completely different underneath, and it does. This Defender is quiet, it's more refined, it's smooth. This engine is really, really quiet, even under power. So I've got the D240 at the moment. So that's 177 kilowatts, twin turbo, two liter diesel, and there's 430 Newton meters there. And that's available from 1400 RPM. So it's a gutsy engine, definitely, running through an eight-speed automatic gearbox. Permanent all-wheel drive, like the old Defender, but along with a locking center diff, you've now got a locking rear diff as well. So in terms of capability, it's right up there. Our next location was the incredible Skeleton Coast, a unique landscape of desert, sand, beach, and ocean that makes up this huge national park on the west side of Namibia. Access is possible for the public, but our convoy was able to go into a different area by blessing of the local rangers. Out here we saw oryx, we saw giraffes, and we played a game of cricket on the beach using driftwood. This skeleton coast gives an incredible feeling of a hostile remoteness that's hard to explain. The seas of this area are even more treacherous. While the whale and seal carcasses that originally gave this area its name are now gone, it's carried on by the thousands of shipwrecks that dot this remote coastline. A couple of our vehicles did have trouble in the soft sand after stopping, needing recovery with max tracks and some digging, but we found if you did keep your momentum and wheel speed high enough, you didn't have any issues. If you're going to buy this Defender and expect it to be like the old one, you're going to be a bit disappointed because it's a different car. Yes, it's got the same nameplate. It does have the same spirit, I suppose, the same feeling about it, but it's more modern, it's more advanced, it's more refined. But that makes it, to be brutally honest, a better all-round vehicle. The old Defender was so uncompromising, the end product is heavily compromised. Great off-road great at load lugging, great at towing, all those things, but on road, practically like a tractor with indicator stalks, right? This new Defender is much more car-like, but it feels like a four-wheel drive, and it does feel like a Defender, which I think is incredibly important. While Namibia might sound dangerous and far-flung, this part of Africa is actually seen as one of the most stable and safe for visitors. So while you might want to get a few jabs from the doctor before visiting, it is a country that has an abundance of wildlife, unique landscapes and friendly locals that makes for an incredible adventure and experience. Our three days covered nearly 1,000 kilometers and we saw such a diverse range of country in that time. It's a landscape undoubtedly best explored by four-wheel drive. You'd want something both off-road capable and comfortable for those long days on the road, and the Defender was great in both respects. In many ways, it proved itself to be the perfect vehicle for what was an amazing journey. If you want to see more of the new Defender off-road, be sure to check out our in-depth review here on YouTube and at caradvice.com. And if you like this content, please consider subscribing to our channel and hitting that thumbs up.